Hello everyone and welcome back to Switchcraft. Today, I'm going to be trying something a little bit new and I wanted to share one of my favorite video game memories of all time with everyone. This is the story of how having my appendix removed in 6th grade helped me beat The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. So let's get right into it. Our story begins in Christmas of 1999 where I got my Jungle Green Nintendo 64 bundle and it included NHL 99 it included Donkey Kong 64 obviously and the legendary Legend of Zelda uh, now I can't remember exactly which game I played first but I definitely remember testing them all out and I know I made it into Jungle Japes and Donkey Kong 64, collecting my first few golden bananas. And I played a bunch of uh, NHL 99 with my brother for months after getting the system. Both of those first two games were simple enough. And you can begin them and get the hang of them pretty quickly. Zelda, on the other hand, it, it definitely stumped my sixth grader brain. I got the basics of moving around and collecting rupees and climbing vines and all that stuff and and I even bought my my first Deku shield and I equipped it but for the life of me I did not have a clue as to where or how I was supposed to get that damn Kokiri sword and make it past that <laughs> annoying Mido. I tried exploring a bit and, and I eventually put the game away. I preferred to collect golden bananas or go head to head playing hockey with my bro. Looking back on it now, I can't believe what a magical experience I had sitting right in front of me. I had arguably what is one of the best adventures in a video game ever, sitting on the shelf, being left unexplored. This was before the days of smartphone and Google and YouTube that you're watching this on, and, and we, our family still had dial-up internet. I wasn't even, I'm not even sure that if I was to go online at that time that I would be even able to find a text walkthrough or a frequently asked questions message board. Anyways, fast forward a few months later and in the middle of March 2000, I woke up in the middle of the night with a dull pain in my lower right abdomen and I, and I had a low fever. I skipped dinner, I had skipped dinner that night and I didn't really have an appetite. So my mom phoned a service in Canada called telehealth, where you can speak to a doctor, which is great, 24-7, and get advice as to whether or not you should go to the hospital. So after describing my symptoms, my mom was told to bring me in. We didn't really have an idea of what it was, but the doctor on the phone suspected that it might be my appendix flaring up. So here we go, middle of the night, we head into the hospital, and when we, when we see the doctor, he begins pressing my belly and asking me all kinds of questions, taking my history, yada, yada, yada. But to make a long story short, everyone decided that it was best for me to go under the knife. Needless to say, I was a little bit scared, but no big deal. My biggest worry at that exact moment was getting the needle for the IV they were going to hook me up to. I hate needles. Not, not just from that day, but for as long as I can remember, I hate them. Flu shot, forget it. So I eventually get the IV and I'm all prepped for surgery in my hospital bed, waiting to get wheeled into the OR. And that's, that's where I really get scared and where the gravity of this situation hit me. I had never been in for surgery of any kind before. I hadn't even broken a bone. And I was a terrified 12 year old, but... My parents were supportive and all the doctors and the nurses, they were super nice. So I went into the OR. I remember getting the uh, anesthesia mask uh, put on me and I was asked to count backwards from 10 to one. I made it down to about six that I can remember and nothing else until I woke up in recovery. Uh, I found out that my appendix was inflamed and set to burst within hours. For those of you who haven't had your appendix out, if it bursts, your body can very quickly go into what's called septic shock and your chances of survival are very low, even today. So I was lucky enough to get it diagnosed and removed before anything got serious. And as a reward for being so brave during my hospital visit, my parents took me to Walmart to pick out a new game and a new controller for my Nintendo 64. I remember it well. 
I picked out the racing game Roadsters and I got this exact, this is the one I got, yellow Nintendo 64 controller. It was good times and I'd say all in all it was worth it. But wait, what the heck does this experience have to do with Ocarina of Time? Well, during my hospital stay, I was lucky enough to be in Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. One of the benefits of being in a sick kids hospital or in a kids hospital is that they have these massive CRT televisions on one of those carts we all know from grade school movie days. Along with the television, I had access to a Nintendo 64. And guess what? One of the games that came with that Nintendo 64 was the same Zelda game that I had at home collecting dust. So I popped it into the console, turned it on, figuring I'd kill some time exploring the Kokri Forest once again except to my surprise when i turned on the console i saw that there was one save file already made and guess what this save file had this little green emerald next to the name what the heck was that needless to say i loaded up and i was shocked to see that i had the dang kokiri sword i needed to get past mido in my game at home and someone had already been to and defeated the boss inside the great Deku tree. I could not believe it. I took advantage of my situation. I began exploring the entire Deku tree and as much of Hyrule as I could over the next day or two before I went home. More importantly, I also made a promise to myself that when I got home, I was going to load up my own copy of Ocarina of Time and with my newly found resolve, and, and determination at an all-time high, I was going to explore every damn square inch of the Kokri Forest, talk to every single character I could, and most importantly, it turned out, read every single sign. Needless to say that within a few minutes of exploring, I found the little crawl space right there, and it was in plain sight the entire time. And my Ocarina of Time adventure truly began when I found that sword for myself. I then went on to, over the next few weeks, beat all of the dungeons, become an adult, slay Ganondorf and Ganon, all without looking online or using a strategy guide. I figured that if I explored enough, and I was logical, and I used my problem-solving skills, and I was methodical enough, and didn't give up, that there was nothing this game could throw at me that I could not handle. Now, looking back, I can honestly say that I appreciated it more because of that. And I think back to a day or a simpler time when you had to work to complete a video game. And there was no tutorial on this very YouTube you're watching this on. Now, with all that being said, it wasn't until shortly after beating the game that I picked up the official uh, Zelda strategy guide to find all those dang golden scatulas. But that's another story without nearly as many needles, operations, time off school, or time in the hospital. That was my first memorable experience with the Ocarina of Time, besides maybe, you know, actually getting it for Christmas some months before. I'm so thankful looking back that I stuck with the game and gave it another shot because I, I really believe that I, I would have been missing out. I cannot tell you the amount of satisfaction that figuring stuff out on my own brings me in video games and with problems and, and puzzles in general. To this day, I really try and exhaust all avenues before looking online. And even then, it's only as a last resort. It may take longer and be a million times more frustrating when you're playing, but the feeling you get from overcoming an obstacle or beating a game on your own really has no substitute. But what do you prefer? Do you look online at the earliest sign of trouble or do you grind it out like I prefer to do? Let me know your stance in the comments below and let me know if you've had an experience with a game that you were totally stuck on. And then maybe you came back a few weeks or even a few months or even a few years later only to have a huge breakthrough and what that game was. Anyways, thanks for taking the time to go back through memory lane with me and how having my appendix taken out helped me beat The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Switchcraft out.